It's local chat. I hope you guys are ready for a doozy daisy of a show. Will's not here. That means it's 33% better. And we've also got Zach himself from Save Data, which makes it 200% better. How's it going, buddy? Man, you stole exactly what my quote was going to be. <laughs> fuck. Good job. <laughs> got him. Uh, yeah, fuck that, Will Cosby. Man, you know, before we get into all this, I want to know... We just did our Extra Life a week and a half ago. You just yeah. did your Extra Life this past weekend. How did it go? Uh, way better than I thought it was going to. Oh, I love uh, it when that happens. Yeah. I mean, the content we had pretty stacked. Like, coming in, we felt good about a lot of the content we were going to do. <laughs> uh, and, like, I felt like a lot of it went pretty dang well. We had a lot of people tune in. Uh, I mean. I we, saw. We it was up, good. We yeah, we ended up going for 26 hours and we had an average of 50 viewers for that whole time, which is that's phenomenal. Better than most of our normal streams. So I, like, we, we noticed as well, like our numbers on average are much lower than yours. But we we have noticed for the three extra lives we do that we do get more people. Which yeah, does not make sense to me? Because there's so many extra life streams for people to pick from. And yeah. it goes for so long, but for some reason, more people tune in. It's weird. I know. What we should do, Ian, is is have both of our channels do quote unquote charity streams. Yes. Uh, but actually, the money just goes directly to us. Yes. Yes. Um. That's. I think. I'm. I think that actually may be illegal. I. Oh I no! It 100 percent is. is. Uh, I am positive that it is. Oh, you did the research. Okay, all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> you looked it up first. Well, well, well no, I, I suggested this once to somebody else uh -huh. years ago about something else, and they were like, that actually is, you can't do that. And I was like, oh, oh, Man, that reminds me of that fantastic uh, 30 Rock episode when Nathan, I think it's Nathan Lane is on. And he's like, a, he's like a con man, but he's like, I've turned better. I'm raising money for the Chicago All Saints Hospital. And then he goes, he goes, just write the check out. Just use the acronym. So people are writing C-A-S-H on the check. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's so good. That is good. Oh, man. So tell me, Extra Life, uh, is this, this is at least the second year you guys have done it. Have you done it more mm -hmm. than that? Uh, it's the second year we've done it as... Mm -hmm officially like save data or right, last year i guess technically we we're still called around the monitor uh david of of save data has done it i think for five years in a row now oh. uh and every time he stayed up the entire 24 that's, hours which that's is crazy bonkers. uh <laughs> and he 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 both times for us has like really taken charge of it so like again mad props to him for for literally like he hosted the stream this entire time he was the one doing all the setups on OBS, like moving everything. It was, it, I was like, damn, dude, I, I, I got to go to bed. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's um, great. What was your, um, it, what are your, what are your just, regrets and what are things from the stream that you think went off way better than you expected? Regrets that we didn't hit the $9,000 we needed to get you a tattoo. Yeah, uh, I hear that. Yeah. Uh, also, again, shout out to the fact that Extra Life actually tweeted at us. I could not believe that. I, same, same. I was, I was like, I was like, wait. The only way they would have because we didn't put that like really out on no. Twitter. Like they had to like have been more tuned into what we were doing, which is amazing. I look. I don't want to jinx it, but I think there is a Subpixel fan in Extra Life that works for Extra Life because the first year we streamed, they did a tweet where they were like. Oh, we're watching these awesome streams, and it was a picture oh, no of way. them with four streams up on their monitor, and one of them was us. And we looked it up, and they were they were an employee for Extra Life. So I, I that's think, rad. I think we may have an inside an inside Fuck man. Yeah. Extra Life. Okay, awesome. okay, okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, and things that went better than I expected. Um, the we 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 did get a VTube uh, rig for oh this, my God. which I was super excited. It was a, a like a Sonic character OC, <laughs> and we played Sonic 06. And I just forgot how dog shit Sonic 06 was. So we got so much laughter out of that. Uh, oh, that's it was great. It was really funny. Uh, and also because this week I've been editing a lot of the the footage to to put up for content over Thanksgiving week because we're we're gonna take most of the week off. Uh, Jason in it like four to five a.m. block played <laughs> Pokemon Stadium Two blindfolded. Oh my god! Just going off of like sound effects of like the Pokemon comes in and it makes its cry. And he's like, uh, "Okay, they have a Clefairy, and uh, I have an Onyx, and I'm gonna do." And I was like, "And he beat it! 
Like he beat a what? full like eight eight contest round, and I was like, "Holy shit, dude!" Like it, it's some really entertaining shit. That's insane. Uh, so go to youtube.com slash save the That's and, some uh, SGDQ it's, stuff, man. It's it's it, it, it's so wild to watch him do it, and and some there's sometimes where he's wrong, mm-hmm. but like that's still part of the game, and like there I think it was like two or three times where he legitimately is like. I bet I'm at like five HP right now. And he was exactly at five <laughs> HP. And like, I know he was just pulling a number out of his ass, but the fact that he got it right and Man. it happens multiple times is, is so entertaining. That's insane. That's crazy. I, um, I, I think our extra life went really well, but I, we always do this thing where right after we make a, a post-mortem doc and we just like mm-hmm. put down the things that worked really well and didn't mm-hmm. work well. And it's, it's always funny. You feel like this is the third year we've done it. Mm-hmm. And I feel like, we i'm not saying we aren't getting better but it feels like every year it's the same amount of things that go really well and things that go really bad Mm, interesting like that percentage has not gone up over the three years (laughs) which is which is weird Um, the the thing we learned so much the first year was don't do too many segments mm. like because we, we there were like the first year we were changing everything we were doing like every hour on the hour Ugh. and it takes like 10 minutes to ch- to change the setup and get the new people on get the new people out yeah and so it was just like everything felt so fucky and like not not cohesive and this year we were like okay if we're doing something it's at least two hours like yeah that way it, like the stream the downtime is worth it and everybody can go pee or whatever but like uh, there there's some things we could have done differently but like for the most part i felt i felt pretty okay felt pretty yeah okay that's good yeah yeah we we learned after the first year we learned to have always have like three or four backup games in your in your back pocket you know mm-hmm. like a backup single player game backup multiplayer game because like the first mm-hmm. segment we did this year was mario party net play which we've done before and which we've tested multiple times and it works mm-hmm. well and it just crapped out did not work yeah. so we just had to pivot immediately to a backup game so yeah that's one of those things that it hurts when it happens mm-hmm. but if you don't do it like last year there was this segment that i was really trying to make happen granted mm-hmm. it, it was like 7 a.m on sunday <laughs> but i spent like 45 minutes troubleshooting it live on stream oh. i just didn't want to give up but i was just like any more backup oh. games got to be ready to pivot that hurts, that yeah. hurts. yeah it was I'll, I'll tell you what it was it was playing my bootleg rest stop snes which has 620 built-in weirdo bootleg games on it oh that's just, fun just doing a roulette couldn't get it to work capture cards hate it because i'm pretty sure the video output is not standardized <laughs> in any way whatsoever that, sound, that sounds like a, a a fake like ad capture cards hate this <laughs> yeah. this bootleg console <laughs> they hate this bootleg speaking of bootleg consoles let's talk about the games <laughs> we've been playing this week <laughs> yeah um, you, you kick it off you got a good one here you've been playing the elden ring beta slash network test yeah uh I, I okay to be to be fair because this did happen only during the weekend that we had our extra live stream and it was only like three hour segments mm-hmm. and half of them were from 6 a.m to 9 a.m and i was like well yeah i'm excited for this game but i'm not getting up that early to play it and the other other half were like 9 p.m to 12 a.m uh and one of those I was doing the extra live stream. The other one I was like partially editing beforehand, like getting the last minute stuff done. So I really only got about four hours to play this. Um, but hey, I'm I'm pretty excited for this video Ooh, game. That's uh, good to hear. It actually, yeah, it actually I was like, okay, there's there's a lot of cool shit going on here. Um, also, I feel like every time a new FromSoft game comes out. Of course, nowadays, like from Soft Souls games are very much in the mainstream. People love to pretend that they're still not. That they're these mm-hmm. niche, like, oh, you got to be a hardcore gamer to like these. No, fucking everybody loves these games. They sell millions of copies. Like, they're get over yourself. They're, they're yeah. popular now. Yeah. This one definitely feels like the most accessible by a long shot, mm. uh, which, which to be fair, isn't saying too much. Yeah. But like pretty quickly on. You, you can get some things that will make the game a lot easier for you. Uh, and they are, they are, you know, you don't have to use them. Like the, the summons is what I'm talking about, essentially. Like the, okay. the AI summons very quickly. Like the first dungeon I went to, which also the open world aspect of it works really well. Um, I saw some people saying like it feels empty. And to that, like 
I understand where you're coming from. I would uh -huh. say if you vibed with Breath of the Wild's open world, where like there's not technically things like you don't see like people yeah. hanging around, but you'll see like, oh, here's a hill and there's probably something on that hill or like, oh, here's here's this cool like rock formation. I bet there's something there. Usually that's kind of what's going on here. Mm -hmm. uh, the exception is that there are like huge overworld boss monsters that like patrol or like do certain things and you you kind of you, you can go chase those and do that. Uh, if you want to get your head kicked in, which I did a couple of times, I was like, oh, no, OK, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not ready for this. <laughs> uh, but the the dungeons are really fun. They feel the dungeons feel like Skyrim dungeons in that okay. they are not big, mm -hmm. but there usually is like a nice reward to them okay. of like, oh, here's here's some gear that is like better than what I have. Or like in my case, the first dungeon I went to had a summon and I used it on the boss and Literally, it was like, here are here you you summon four shitty goons that can take two hits, but four shitty goons, it distracts the boss for a pretty good amount of time. Yeah, exactly. And so yeah. and I was just like slashing the backside, and and you still had to play it smart, but also the classes. Uh, from what I understand, I only played one of them, but like a lot of them have various ways to deal with things. I almost always just play a melee build in Souls games. I picked one. That I was like, oh, I'm sure this is the melee build. And like, no, it, it has spells. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. I'll try those spells. And like, they were really helping me out with some of these things. <laughs> so I, I didn't get to the major like dungeon. Uh, it's from what I understand, I think there's supposed to be like five big ones. Okay. And one of them was included in this, or half of this, half of one of them is included in this demo. Uh, like Castle Stormwind or something like that. And I, I didn't actually enter that because i was just mm. like i'm gonna run out of time and i don't want to start this dungeon and then suddenly it, it gets cut off so i'd, I'd rather just kind of walk around the open world and, and see what i find and yeah the the jumping actually feels okay it, it listen it, it's from soft game but the fact that jump is actually mapped to the the, the a button or the x button depending on really? Xbox or playstation like that felt really weird that is surprising uh especially it makes it so the interact button is whatever your top face button. So triangle for PlayStation uh, Y for Xbox. And like mm -hmm. I was I, every time I walked up to something, I kept pushing a and I would just, just jump in place. Jump and I was around. like, God damn it. God damn it. Uh, <laughs> but also the, the horse feels incredible. Uh, that blew my mind that they made the horse feel good. Also the horse double jumps. Which I is, saw that. That's insane. That's it, crazy. It feels so good. Uh, also they, they, severely nerfed fall damage which was such a good choice uh because yeah. there's a lot of very vertical traversal in the game uh but overall i i'm very excited to see when this game comes out uh if there's you know what no i'm not gonna say if there's like no <laughs> it's very it's it would out. be very hard for me to believe that this game isn't gonna at least be like an eight out of ten for me probably higher like like I'm pretty all in on it. I'm very excited. Uh, it, it, it's the thing where I'm still not like, listen, I know it's coming in February. I'm going to be fine. God knows there's a bajillion things that are still coming out between then and yeah. now. There's a bajillion games I haven't played that I want to get to. There's a bajillion games coming out in February. You know? Yes. So. Oh, God. Oh, well, you know what? There isn't fucking. Uh, <laughs> what is it called? Saints Row. Saints Row is gone. Yeah. Uh, but uh I, I i can't wait i'm I'm excited i'm i'm glad i'm glad you're liking it because i i saw some negative takes there were some journalists who felt a little disappointed by the open world um mm -hmm. and and just hearing you describe how it's not as high a bar to entry as the other uh souls definitely games, not definitely not that see that i i respect the souls games i have played mm -hmm. all of them at least one hour of all of them go watch okay. your time to die series um <laughs> And I, re I respect them. I just couldn't get into them because they were too challenging for me and I didn't enjoy that challenge. Mm. And so hearing this, I'm like, you know what? Maybe I will give this a shot eventually. Um, it's, it's definitely a thing where like, you know, when I was younger, I could deal with a game that would be like, per like the, the, the mechanics would be purposefully obtuse. Mm -hmm. And like part of the fun of the game is figuring out how it actually works. And nowadays I'm like, I don't have fucking time for that. Just yeah. Just how to play the game. And this for the most part feels a much bigger step in that direction. So I'm, I'm pretty there definitely like there was a point where like I literally had to Google how to use the summon. Yeah. 
And I was like, how do I map this to, to use it? And you have to make it an item and you can only use it in certain areas. And I was like, okay, that's <laughs> fine. But like, you're not going to be using it against like overworld. three three little zombies that are walking around. So I was like, okay. But uh, to be fair, there are like encampments, mm-hmm. like a la a Ubisoft open world game. And those are like, you can summon something as you're going into that. Okay. You can also stealth as you're going into that, which is like interesting. It doesn't feel great, but it, mm-hmm. it's an option if you want to like cheekily take off a few of the enemies. Um, and also when you when you enter the encampments, if you beat the encampment, you get your like Estes flask replenished. Yeah. So it, so it does actually like reward you for choosing to take out these like smaller enemy encampments. I'm like, OK, that, that that's cool. I like that. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I I think I don't know if I'm going to play it at launch because I don't know if I'm prepared to drop sixty, seventy dollars on a game that I may not enjoy. But no, that's fair. That's fair. I'll definitely try it eventually. Whereas right now, before talking to you, I was kind of like, you know what? I'm probably never going to try this because it Mm. doesn't sound different enough from the other games. And I'm not saying that against the game. I'm saying that for Mm. my play style. I don't think there's enough different people to enjoy it, but it sounds like there is. So I'll try it eventually. I'm like I said, I, I was very curious how this open world would feel because it's such a huge yeah. departure from them. Yeah. Uh, but I'm excited. And while the lore of the game doesn't seem anything like breaking new grounds, I don't know if the George R. R. Martin partnership is really going to pay off for them, but I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> no, no, it literally it like to a T feels exactly like every other dark souls game so yeah. far again it's the first hour so who, who fucking knows but yeah well um you've also been playing some halo infinite multiplayer is that right i mean literally just uh an hour and a half you like it <laughs> right before the stream uh my my reactions coming out of it we played i think five rounds one zero of them yeah uh i am so bad at first person shooters holy shit i have not played them competitively in a long time <laughs> But honestly, felt pretty fun. I, I I don't think I would start playing it alone. Definitely yeah. going in with friends is what's going to be the motivator for me. Um, and coming off of like the most recent shooter I kind of got into was Apex Legends, which is very much so a more fast paced shooter. Yep. So it took a bit to get used to the movement feeling so slow and stiff. But I, I, I wouldn't call it stiff. It just feels slower. Um, yeah, and there is there's definitely kind of a, a a barrier to entry as far as knowledge of like oh here are all these different weapons here are all these different maps yeah here are all these different like uh they call them equipment in this game of like oh you get the grappling hook oh you get the overshield oh you get the the boost to punch people in the face <laughs> yeah. thing uh there's so many of them and and I was definitely overwhelmed playing that tonight but I honestly. I, I think I might because it's only nine dollars for the for the first season battle pass. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I'm going to invest in it and 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 check it out. I will say there's been a lot of blowback against the progression system. Yeah, it sucks. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say in just the, the hour and a half I played, I was like, oh, I feel like they should make the first like 10 levels go really quickly. And yeah. they really don't. I saw I saw somebody on Twitter say I played the game for 10 hours and finally hit level two. Like, yeah, it's just and so. So my understanding is that it's all challenge based. So you get challenges like blow up a warthog or get a mm-hmm. quadruple kill and you mm-hmm. have to pass those challenges to level up. There's no like mm-hmm. match XP. Is that right? So they, they did patch it in, I think, either like late yesterday or early today. You okay. do get match HP like one per every match, mm-hmm. but it's it's 50 and it takes a thousand to level up to level one. I don't know if it gets higher the more you go. So that's 20 matches. Yes. If you're not doing the things, uh, I will Lord. say a- out of playing the five rounds, I got one of my quests. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it was like kill somebody using this gun five times. And thankfully I did. But like, yeah, some of them, some of them was like, well, I'm, I'm not going to get this one. So, yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, weird. It's like I'm all for innovation and changing things up. Mm-hmm. But when I hear this system, it sounds like such a step in the wrong direction. And my immediate gut reaction is like, no, just give us XP for the match and then have the mm-hmm. challenges be part of the battle pass. And you rank up the battle pass separately, which is how everybody else do, does it. And I'm not saying that's totally. the perfect way, but they they took a risk 
and they somehow did it completely wrong compared to the standard you know and it's, and, and i i 100 agree they should have gotten flack for this and they did i'm happy yeah. that they pretty quickly pivoted and were like we're, we're, we're we are hey listen y'all we are trying to work on like a better system in the meantime here's 50 xp for round which yeah game's been out for a few days i'm sure they're going to make something better i will say the one thing i do really appreciate is that the battle pass never expires that's good so if i i listen i guarantee you i'm not going to keep playing this game religiously i never do with any multiplayer shooter but like if i come back a year from now because of i don't know they added in something cool or maybe just a group of friends really want to play uh I can log back in and hey, that that season one battle pass will still be ticking off points and unlocking rewards. That's awesome. Uh, which is like that's that's a great system. And honestly, I think every other uh, like game that has a battle pass should do that. Yeah. So, yeah, it's it's crazy. Anyway. I um, what's your history with the Halo franchise? Have you played the previous Halos? So one, two and three loved religiously. Uh, yeah. I got uh, an Xbox pretty much almost at launch uh my dad i think he like got it at an auction or something he worked at microsoft got it yeah 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 yeah, yeah. uh and like he he was like i got it and like i went to the store and they they told me that this this game is probably too mature for you but it is like the game to get for xbox i was like okay cool (laughs) and i mean i was like i just think i was like 10 when halo one came out your dad's at the store and they're like, I don't know if you get this for sound. It's really mature. And your dad's going, there's a chance I'll see tits if I play this game. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I'll get yeah, it for yeah. my son. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but like, I remember he gave it to me. And I don't know if you remember the first level of, of Halo 1. Oh, yeah. But like, 100%. Like Pillar of Autumn. And like, yes. Loaded that up. Got in. Like, you do the stupid thing where it makes you look <laughs> up and down, left and right. That old old video games made you do. And uh, like, the guy's like, oh follow me chief and he walks out of the room and then just an explosion comes and instantly kills that guy and i remember being a child and i played that and i was like i'm gonna go to bed that i'm was, gonna I, i'm, I'm gonna I need to put now. this game down for today and like i like went out to the living room and like told my parents i was like this game's really intense uh, uh I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna sit on this i'm gonna play it tomorrow <laughs> and like thinking back on that of like being a 10 year old saying something like that but no, I, I played the shit out of Halo. Uh, had some friends who actually like got a LAN party, and then like pretty much all through high school, like Halo Two and Halo Three was like obsessed with. Yeah. Uh, four and five never played. Um, you're not. So I don't know what you're not that missing says. much. I mean, you're just yeah. missing the story, which I don't know how much that's going to come out in the Halo Infinite single player, but yeah, from what I understand, the 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 enemies in Halo Infinite are the villains from halo wars 2 and i was like y'all you're pulling for some weird lore on this one but at least they are they are they are covenant type creatures and not yeah four and five added a whole new race that was just a little wonky forerunners and some weird shit guardians or something it was who wants who wants to bet the fucking flood show up again i don't know who knows yeah but uh yeah I, i think for me i played a little bit of halo infinite multiplayer i think i played two matches on console two matches on pc and it it was Mm -hmm. it was it felt really good to play it and just be like it's halo like it feels like halo i i don't think they departed too much from that with four and five but it's been a while and it feels good Mm -hmm. to have that halo back and then i also Mm -hmm. remembered oh i am terrible at slash i don't really like halo multiplayer and oh it's nothing against the game i think it's just the style of game i like to play Mm-hmm. And it like you talking about how how it's a little bit too slow. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's part of it. It feels like it's in this weird gray area between arcade fast and like like pseudo tactical realistic. And so it's yeah, like yeah yeah yeah. It's yeah. like you're you're moving slow, but the time to kill is also you have to dump a whole mag in somebody. And again, this isn't against the game. It's just I never felt super comfortable with it. And so I'm mm-hmm. like, great. It feels like Halo can't wait for the campaign because i love the campaign i just don't enjoy the competitive multiplayer part so mm. but it's it's good that's back i can't believe it's free i can't i honestly i can't believe they they early dropped it that was Abs- that was whoa. it's oh and, and man i do wish that it hadn't kind of leaked that would have been i here's the thing i didn't the believe most. those i didn't believe them until it actually happened because i was like those are that's that's kind of insane i didn't i didn't believe it either but like if we had no idea 
Like, mm -hmm. whole, can you imagine? I mean, the internet still went insane. Yeah. But like, honestly, to, to, to real talk, I do wish they actually would just delay the campaign into next year so that they could launch co-op with it. I understand why they're yeah. not doing that. It It's just for me, it, it feels very strange for them to not have co-op with campaign at launch. I can see uh, that. Yeah. But. I'm I'm still excited that this is here. I, again, cannot fucking believe that this is free. Not including Game Pass, it's just free. Yeah, uh, which is awesome. What a wild man! I just Xbox kills kudos, it again. Kudos Killing to it. Bill Spencer, man. Like oh, he's my daddy. I, he I, I, he can. I, I'll oh. call him daddy. <laughs> yeah, he's good. He's real good. Yeah. He is everything we yeah. thought he would be and better. Um, yeah, legit. Speaking of Xbox, I've been playing a little bit of Forza Horizon 5. We talked about it last week. I, I have a couple more gripes with it. I was uh, going to say, I, I listened to the segment where you were talking about this, and, and you were pretty peeved about the rubber banding. It's it's very upsetting <laughs> because, like, Mario Kart doesn't have rubber banding. They use Wait, items. Yes, yes, it does. It does have I, I think it uses items. Oh, sorry. You mean in terms of speed? Yes. Yeah. You are correct. The, yes. the rubber banding is purely item based. Yes. And and I have played arcade racers that have rubber banding and I've mm -hmm. kind of been okay with it because that's what it is. But for mm -hmm. Forza to be like, this is like, they're not trying to be a simulator. Borderline realist. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But they're trying to be realist and they're like, tune your car and get it going faster. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is that they are not, the way they implemented it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think, as far as I know, they've never said there's no rubber banding in this game. But they never talk about it. But the way they implemented it mm. makes it super freaking obvious, Microsoft. Like, I was I was playing a race earlier. Come on, Phil. I was playing a race earlier. And I took off, and I was like five, five, ten seconds in front of everybody behind me. And I was racing the AI. And it was like, it was like mm. a, it was literally a 20-minute race. So mm. I just oh, built man. up this, this huge lead by the end of it. Mm -hmm. and in the last 60 seconds they're like basically oh. like a couple straightaways and i mm -hmm. realized i i swear to you folks i could feel my car going slower and i looked down and my speedometer was pegged much lower than it should have been mm -hmm. and the ai is catching up to me and i'm just like what no. what is happening like they make it so obvious and apparent that it, it 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 just ruins any race because every race just becomes mm. like it, it becomes almost like those uh like like Disney World or Disneyland where they have the, the vehicles and you're like you're driving the vehicle but it's on a track so you try and turn it and yeah. it just keeps hitting the guardrails and it's like <laughs> it's just such a thing because they have so many cars so many ways to customize them great mm -hmm. map the driving mm -hmm. does feel pretty good except for the rubber banding and it's just like mm -hmm. oh god it pisses me off anyways I didn't intend to talk about that so that's your fault. <laughs> Okay. um uh, blame, blame the guest jeez uh, i have another qualm with it though and this is less with forza and okay. more with the xbox ecosystem ecosystem huh. yeah and i've had this issue before and i really thought it was going to be fixed but i i have a pc i also have an xbox one x i also have an xbox mm -hmm. series x and there are certain mm -hmm. games at certain times where i will be playing it on the couch or maybe i'll be playing it in bed or maybe i'll be playing mm -hmm. it in my gaming room on my pc mm -hmm. those all those systems for these xbox microsoft games are syncing to the cloud but yes. they get out of sync my my xbox oh i played the first 10 hours of forza on that then i switched to the pc and i played like another six hours i went back to the xbox it without fail keeps loading a save the from like four hour. hours earlier oh. and it's weird because it'll update it'll grab an update every now and then but they are completely out huh. of sync now like the console is always three four hours behind there's no easy option for you to like go into a menu and say force sync my save or like delete my local you have to huh. do all these backdoor methods so basically i'm stuck on the pc now which is kind of better because i can listen to podcasts while i'm playing it but it means mm -hmm. that if i'm in if i'm in the living room if i'm in my bedroom i can't play forza horizon 5 because I'm afraid it's going to overwrite mm -hmm. my cloud save or I'm going to be five, six hours behind. It sucks. Oof, it sucks, suck. folks. <laughs> and it's happened to me with other uh, Xbox games before. They really need to fix their cloud save syncing system or at least like expose some tools for you to just be like, no, pick the save that you want to play with save. right now. Yeah. It huh. sucks. It sucks. You know what else that sucks? A lot of gaming news. Battlefield 2042. 
Oh, oh God. sorry, we're not there yet. Sorry, we're not there yet. <laughs> I was trying to give you the sweet, I sweet know. transition. <laughs> There's too much suckage in this episode. Um, That's why we canceled around the monitor this week. <laughs> <laughs> you played any Battlefield 2042, either the beta or the the launch? I have zero interest. Oh, yeah. uh, I know. I know people love the Battlefield franchise. I just have. I don't honestly don't think I've ever played a single one of them. Zach, I uh, I am just so so jealous that you <laughs> dodged the 2042 bullet because like this game, like I I used to enjoy the Battlefield series, and then I dropped it for hmm. a while. And 2042, man. That trailer when it came out, it was oh, it was hot. It was hot. It was sane and showing all the right things, and they had all these great mm-hmm. ideas. And then the beta comes out, and they're like, "It's broken," but they're like, "Don't mm-hmm. worry, it's a beta. This build it's is months beta. old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything's fixed." And it was like, "Yeah, there's definitely some good parts in here." The game uh-huh. came out. I look. I'm not making statements here. Again, I'm gonna pull the <laughs> I am in software development card. Oh, okay. I was, I was just I was like, I think you are going to make a statement here, though. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but I swear to you, the real game feels like about two weeks of work on top of the beta build. Like, it has mm. a majority of the same issues. They they fixed the smallest of stuff. Like, in the beta, the map button didn't work. Like, if you hit M, it didn't open the map. And then in the, oh. real, in the real game, they literally touted this in a blog post. They were like, guys, introducing... We fixed the map. <laughs> no, they said introducing big map. Hitting the M button opens big map where you can see the whole battlefield. And I was like, you freaking morons. It's not even a good map. map. It's not even a good map. <laughs> Yo, check out big map. This game is so bork. Like, like <laughs> the shooting doesn't feel good. I have literally had instances in which I have had uh, playing against bots. So it's not mm. even a network issue or anything. Somebody's here and I'm my cursor's on them and I empty a magazine on them. And the real mm-hmm. code doesn't take me anywhere outside of them. None of the bullets hit. And it's just like, oh. excuse me, what? I, I've had like somebody 30 feet in front of me. They were running. And then all of a sudden mm-hmm. they got stuck in like a non-run animation and they were just floating across the ground. So I had to like oh. look away from them and look back to get the animation to pop in. There's just like I... glitches and clips. It's bad. It's bad, man. I understand that they had to put Battlefield out for the shareholders, probably because this is EA, right? EA owns Battlefield. It was it was for Andrew Wilson. When when God commands it, uh, you have to do it. Uh, it, It's the thing for me. I just. And of course, February is literally hell, so I get that. Yeah. And of course, they want to they want to cash in on the holiday season. But let me pitch you an alternate reality where they say, hey. I know this is going to suck ass. Let's let's move it to March. Let's spread the cheeks. Get ready to kiss. Exactly. Because because then they're not competing with Call of Duty, which, you know, is going to eat into your sales. It's going to do gangbusters, even though Call of Duty is apparently selling worse than any other Call of Duty so far. Good. Which is also kind of expected. But hey, guess what? Also, freaking Halo's back and it's free. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Who wants to pay for for this buggy battlefield? When you could have waited again, it's five months. I understand that is an eternity yeah. to not be making money on this game, especially when you're paying on average ten thousand dollars per developer per month. But like, it could have had a chance then, and I feel like now, honestly, I could see EA being like, "Why are we putting money into Battlefield? Apex yeah. Legends is making us gangbusters. Yep, it's also being critically reviewed well. This so is, why this is supposed bother? to be the reboot." You know, and yes, I look, I, I don't mean to be a pessimist Peter here, but like they could have so it's so easy to delay this game. All they had, they just had to say one word to delay this game. I'm sorry. Two words, which is (laughs) guys. Sorry. Oops. COVID. There are so many games getting delayed because of COVID. And I, I guarantee you, most of them are. There's a good portion that are not being delayed because of COVID. It's because they needed to delay the game, period. And they're like, great, we can just blame at it on this COVID. Point, yeah. At this point, uh, yeah, I think most of the games that are being delayed yeah. and using COVID, it, it feels a little like, okay, I mean, listen, we, we get it. We uh, get it, but we also... Game development is really hard, Yeah. Uh, but but you can stop using that. Um, yeah. We've been working from home for like 18 months now. The whole world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we, we get it. We get it. Unless yeah. you are Nintendo, who doesn't understand how to <laughs> yeah. do that, then yeah but it's just it's just so crazy because like 
there was so much hype between 2042. They're doing a lot of good things in it, but the state that this game came out in, like mm-hmm. the build that I am playing as launch feels like that should have been the beta build. Like the early access. Yeah, yeah, like it just has so much wonk in it. The gameplay doesn't feel great. The bots don't like I I I really like playing games against bots, like battlefield type mm. games against bots. Yeah. Oh yeah. Screw real people. Just give me a meat grinder and I'm <laughs> and I'm mowing people down. I love it. I played one match at Battlefield 2042 with bots. Didn't feel good. Mm. It has a lot of the same. Huh. It just, the, the core shooting mechanics don't feel good. The spawn mechanics, it just doesn't feel good. The, AI, the, the bot AI, not that I expected it to be amazing, but they were like half standing in the middle of the road, half turning around and one-shotting you. And it was just like... Interesting. I put it down after that. You, they can't even get me with AI mode, which is... That's my bread and butter. That's put a podcast on. Let me just kill some, <laughs> some, some AI. You know, it's... Uh. <laughs> It's very disappointing. I it's it's crazy. I'll I'll mention it here. I wasn't planning on it, but I'll mention it. I Forza Horizon Five, right? Uh-huh. That came out. I got a little disappointed. I feel like I'm done with it. Mm-hmm. Battlefield 2042 came out. I'm done with it. I put mm-hmm. like two hours into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, GTA Definitive Edition. I'm not even gonna touch it because it sounds like it's in just god awful yeah, state. A lot of a lot of. I, a lot of issues in that one. All three of those came out last week, and I literally thought I was going to be in a state where I was like, "These are gonna, these are gonna be my games for the next take month." It, take your life, yeah, yeah. And and then Halo multiplayer came out, and nothing against Halo, but I was like, "Wait a minute, I actually, I never really liked this." So uh, yesterday morning, it was twenty five bucks on Amazon. I bought Final Fantasy VII remake, folks. It's installed on my console. I'm starting it off. Whoa. That's my Thanksgiving game. I'm ready, baby. I'm wow. ready. I'm ready for a good game. Are you are you historically a Final Fantasy person? No. I played I okay. played um <laughs> I played a little bit of tactics. Okay. Uh I mean I love tactics, don't get me wrong. Uh but I was like ten. Very so much I, not this game. So I played a little bit of it. I played like four or five hours of fifteen and honestly, love the story. I hated 15's mechanics. Um I thought you were part of the group that lost their lives to 15 for a little bit no you're thinking of Was that just will 14. and david 14 oh i totally am thinking of 14 yeah, 14 yeah, sorry, baby sorry. i've got like 100 hours into 14 fantastic oh game <laughs> and i played the first like 10 15 hours of final fantasy 7 originally mm. like a couple years ago on switch and i loved That's it fucking boring oh no sorry oh, <laughs> i honestly I, that, that story rips from the start but I got to a point uh, where it was like, you're going to have to grind in the overworld. And I was like, okay, I think I'm done. Yeah, no, I think no, I'm no. done. Yeah. 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 I, I played, I played nine first, so I, I couldn't go back to seven. I I've been thinking Very about fun. going back to those, but seven remake. I'm so excited because people say it's just as good, if not better than the original and the original story really grabbed me. It was just how dated it was that pushed me away. And so I am. No, I, I think you'll dig it. I think you'll dig it. I, oh, I, I like it a lot. So, uh, and I didn't like the OG Final Fantasy VII, so there you go. You're a piece of I shit. Think, I think you're gonna have a good time. Yeah, I, I, it's just crazy. I like all these blockbuster games coming out. I thought I would love, and I'm just pushing back against them for whatever I, reason. Legitimately, I, I feel like that for me has kind of been the story of this year. Is just like yeah. every game that I think is gonna blow my mind doesn't, and then I'm just kind of like, oh, it's not that they're not good games. They're just like eight out of tens, and I'm like, yeah. I'm happy with that. I don't know but if you I heard. Want, um, I don't have like something to like point my hat at and be like, "That's game of the year." Look, two, three episodes. I did it. I found game of the year. It's called Inscription. Play it. Oh no, Inscription is, is probably later. my game of the year. Yeah, Inscription is it's probably inc- my game. Of the it's year. incredible. It's incredible, isn't yeah. it? It's I. I we can't talk about it here because no spoilers. But dear lord, yeah. literally the amount of times I just backed away from the computer and went, "Oh my god, so good." <laughs> So yeah, good. it's so it's, good. it's a really it's a really special. I I kind of some of some of the back. Yes. Well, we can't talk about it. I agree. Some of the back gets a little bit long in the tooth, not as good, but overall, not, it's, still incredible. Not even that. Like some of the some of the story parts fall apart for me a little bit. A little bit. And the core card game, I'm not super crazy about. It's good, but it's not amazing. Mm. I, I I liked it. You you could give me a whole game of the second part and i would be like this is pretty good 100 percent. yeah i agree with that uh speaking of agreeing with let's turn it over to special guest zach (laughs) here's the news we're 
We're talking about news. It's gaming news. What's up, news? What a jam. Oh, thanks for joining, Zach. Uh, over to the news segment with special guest Zach. Are you ready to talk about incredible week of news? Uh, thank you for that song, Zach. Yes, I am. <laughs> I didn't realize until right before we started that I was like, oh, my version has the baked in Discord inter and exit noises. I, I literally, I, I just checked the Discord call to be like, did somebody just jump into this? <laughs> because um, we, we streamed last night and Chris did that to yeah. us. Like we, we, we were streaming Ace Attorney and like randomly two hours in, Chris jumped in and said an insult and then jumped out of the call. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Um, Anyways, uh, High Spear is heading into the news section. Oh, no. <laughs> we need to talk about Activision Blizzard. How do you want to do this? Do you want to have reactions beat by beat, or do you want me to just run down the play by play, and then we just talk about it? How you feel? Um, let's do beat by beat, because going just just hearing it all at once is going to be too overwhelming. There's a lot. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. so Wall Street Journal publishes mm -hmm. on uh, Tuesday... Headline, Activision CEO Bobby Kotick knew for years about sexual misconduct allegations at video game giant. Um, and there's also several allegations in this article about him uh, sexually harassing people, uh, mm -hmm. stepping in and preventing people from being fired when they were about to be fired by HR. And yep. uh, I believe at one point he threatened to kill somebody uh, because of, I, I don't think that yep. was, was, I don't think that was specifically tied to sexual harassment, but he was basically just like, you're not doing your job, yeah, right? Yeah. I'm going to kill you or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Which it, was, it, yeah. I believe that was on voicemail or something. So there was evidence <laughs> yeah. of it. And, yeah. um, just, I, I saw this like, like the whole, the whole like Chekhov's gun with the whole Activision blizzard thing was just like, okay, the rockstar CEO, Bobby Kotick, Moneyball, star of, brad pitt's co-star uh-huh how much did he know was he involved in exactly this? you know exactly. and it was like he probably did know but there's no way he knew this much because i'm not i'm not trying to stand up for bobby kodak but it was like there's no way you could have a ceo like that directly involved and still around and it turns out it's right, much worse right. than that it's crazy exactly exactly uh it, it, it's it's like right when all this shit came out about ubisoft last year yeah they had their first press not press uh stockbroker meeting uh, online thing and and one of the when they got to the q a section somebody instantly like the first question that got asked was talking to to the ceo eve gimo and was like so uh, i got a couple questions and it was like how much uh, it's it's like either you're you didn't know what was going on and that means you're a bad ceo because yep. this is happening under your leadership or you knew what was going on and let it happen, which also means you're a bad CEO. And like the third option was basically like you knew some of it, but you didn't do enough to discover more. It, it, either way, if you are if you are at the top when stuff like this is happening on this scale, yeah, you are responsible. Sorry, I just hit my mic in some way, shape, or form. Uh, and and just like I said with then, like Eve Gimo yeah. needs to step down. Same thing here. Kodak, I mean, not, even before this, I didn't like him as CEO at Activision. But yeah. this is like, oh no, you are a very bad person. Yeah, it's like you didn't not cover just up. in that you are making bajillions of dollars off yeah. of the backs of so many other people, which I have an issue with already. But it's just like you, yeah, you, you're a monster. You weren't just covering up; you were also committing. Um, yeah. So uh, uh, just just stepping forward a little bit in the timeline, then that morning, uh, Kodak came out with a public message calling the article, quote, inaccurate, misleading and saying mm -hmm. any uh, anyone that doubts his conviction to create the most inclusive workplace doesn't really appreciate how important this is to me. Um, off. Yeah, just a generic. Sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like uh, like Jeff Grubb, a uh, reporter for, for, for Gamesbeat. Mm -hmm. uh, put out a, a tweet then was like oh I, I i'm so sorry i just didn't understand how important this was to him <laughs> yeah yeah just like... just insane uh so a couple hours later uh abk which is the activision blizzard king workers alliance 
Mm-hmm. Uh, they staged a walkout. They put out a statement saying, we have our own zero tolerance policy in reference to Activision Blizzard, saying they have a new zero tolerance policy, saying they will not be silenced by until Bobby Kotick has been replaced as CEO. And they staged a walkout that day, which honestly is good for them. Because right before they announced it, I was Hell like, yeah. it's like if I was in this position, I, I would go talk to my fellow coworkers and I would say, we got to walk out till he's gone. Like, mm-hmm. period. Um, and then uh, what I think is... I don't want to say the most shocking. Okay, no, I'll say, look outside I know the allegations. Exactly what you're saying, yeah. Outside the allegations, the most shocking part is later that day, the Activision Blizzard board released a statement reiterating its support for CEO Bobby Kotick. I'm gonna uh, cherry pick some uh, statements here. The board remains committed to the goal of making Activision Blizzard the most welcoming and inclusive company in the industry. Under Bobby Kotick's leadership, the company is already implementing industry-leading changes, including a zero-tolerance harassment policy. The board Unbelievable. Remains, the board remains confident that Bobby Kotick appropriately addressed workplace issues brought to his attention. The board remains confident in Bobby Kotick's leadership, commitment, and ability to achieve these goals. Like, they literally said things in here that are exactly against what he has been accused of by multiple mm-hmm. sources. Mm-hmm. Uh, just... I think it was... Oh... I think it was fanbite. Somebody put out an article that was like the board commits like these things aren't okay unless Bobby Kotick does them. And I'm like, God fucking damn it. Like it literally is what they said though, essentially. Like Yeah. I, I believe it was <sighs> yesterday there was a Blizzard internal HR meeting, like all hands, and I don't know if this was a direct quote, but it was basically a lot of people came out of it saying they basically said that the zero tolerance of policy does not apply to Bobby Kotick. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like this. This is the part. Then where it's what like, are we doing here? Like, exactly. Why would you like, like this? This. OK, look, look, Codex actions awful. This, in my opinion, in this scandal is the worst part. If you are the board, you need to cut Codex loose. You need to say he get rid of them. And that's what I don't understand is like and they're not is the all of the board is like, no, nah, no, nah, we're stick with this dude. And it's like, guys, yeah. guys, this ship is drowning. It's His, not sinking. It's on the fucking ocean floor. You yeah. th- at least buy yourself some time and get rid of the CEO. Yeah. He's doing you no favors right now. It, I will say, though, his mom is on the board, which that's but that's only one negative vote. You know, that's that's, that's incredibly that's, adorable. Um, <laughs> if it wasn't disgusting, no, uh, his but mom's it's like, rich, so it's not. It's just like. And two, there was the whole thing of. uh uh Gosh, what what is her name? Um, uh, yeah, I forget. Sarah, Sarah O'Neill. Yeah, I think it's Sarah O'Neill. It's something O'Neill. Uh, was was named the co-lead of the company along with Mikey Barra, and then it also came out that she was getting paid less than her like the co-lead. Yeah. And it's like, and she requested multiple times, like, "Hey, could I could I get paid as much as the the, the other guy doing the same job yep. as me?" And they were like, "No," and it's like, guys, yeah, just just about- there's so many like there's so many obvious things that you could have like this is a win. Yeah, and instead they, they were like, it. nope. And then it, it's literally just, it's shooting themselves in both feet at the same time. It's baffling. Yeah. Yeah, it's so baffling. Just, just to explain that example, because I love it so much. Well, it's awful, but I love it as an example is uh, back when the scandal first broke about uh, the sexual harassment at Blizzard, they uh, the president of Blizzard left and they appointed mm-hmm. co-presidents. One was a woman, one was a man. The woman mm-hmm. was not being paid the same as the man and she knew it and requested it and she also reported to hr she's like hey i've been sexually harassed in the past and i want to report that and address it and hr basically scoffed and brushed her off as the president of blizzard literally unbelievable and then she ended up and then she ended up resigning because of those reasons and only after she submitted a resignation letter did they say okay we'll pay you the same as your male colleague that does like literally the exact same job as you and she was like no fucking unbelievable it's fucking unbelievable this is like look i'm it's not easy to run a company (laughs) But it's also easy to avoid the mistakes they are making here. This is crazy. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it feels like such a forced day. It, it, it's like somebody wrote a book of all the wrong things to do, yeah. and they're just doing all of them. And it, it it's baffling. Yep. Um. So just to, uh, two more news stories. I, 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 did, I, I was going to say, actually, while we were doing that, I looked up uh, how Activision stock has gone this week. Uh, it has dropped fourteen percent since Tuesday. Ooh, that's no good. That's uh, a huge amount. 
I will say there are two good news stories out of this, which is both PlayStation and Xbox have actively said that they are reevaluating yes. their relationship with Activision Blizzard, both in terms of like publishing their games or any sort of marketing partnerships, basically saying, hey, this behavior from Activision Blizzard is very troubling. And wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If something doesn't change soon, we're not going to do business with you anymore. And that's right. huge. That's huge. I, that Literally, that was that. Like seeing both of those get put out essentially around the same time, I was like, oh, this Bobby Kotick might actually get fired. Uh, yeah. And I, I had I had zero faith that he was actually going to have face any consequences until both Phil Spencer and uh, I can't remember who the head at PlayStation was that that did the interview or whatever said this. Jim Ryan, I think maybe uh, where we're like, hey, yo, this is not OK by us at all. Yeah. Uh, and that was when I was like, oh, there might be real consequences, because I guarantee you the second that they say you can't put your games on our hardware, you're going to lose billions of dollars. Yeah, that's when they're like, OK, Bobby, who? I don't yeah. know this guy. Although, honestly, um, at this point, uh, at least a majority, if not all of that board has to go as well. Oh, they've got to go. A hundred percent. Can't believe And right now them. people are requesting for the two oldest members of the board mm -hmm. who I think they've been there since ninety five and ninety seven each mm -hmm. which is such a wildly long time yeah uh to be board members of this company and yeah it's it's it feels like a very much like it, it's been an old boys club for a long time and that's what's gotten them into this mess and they are just so dug in the mud that they refuse to realize that that is the problem yep and it's it's oh, it's baffling. Oh, also, the most the other book wild thing that happened was that it was revealed uh, shortly when the whole when they, right when they they got faced with a lawsuit from California. Yep. the I can't remember what her name was, uh, a, a very high up woman in the company uh, put out like a statement of like, this isn't the blizzard I work for, blah, 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 yeah, blah. I believe she, like, I believe she was from real. HR, I think, or something. Yeah, like that. Yeah, she, yeah, yeah. I think she was the head of HR or something. And and it was like. It was a bad statement and everybody's bad. like, yo, this is not, this looks terrible for you to be saying this. And Bobby Kodak himself like came out and was like, this was a tone deaf message for you to say. And it turned out that Bobby Kodak wrote that fucking message himself <laughs> and slapped her name on it. And I was like, what the fuck, dude? It's crazy, you man. literally like. I love it. I love it. Oh, it's ba It's so baffling. Yeah. How did you fuck this up so bad, Robert? <sighs> Bobby. Bobby K. <sighs> Bobby K. Yeah, it's it's just like I I will say there are some positives here, which is number one, this is all happening in the public. This is all happening mm -hmm. inside light, and hopefully that will kill all of the scum and germs and nastiness associated with this. I because sure hope so. There are plenty of companies where this is happening and or has happened in the past that do not have uh i don't want to say where the workers of that company don't have the luxury of being such a public company mm -hmm. where they just have to suffer because they're generic company one two three that are and they're being treated awful so this is hopefully this is big enough that this will shake the industry and it looks like it is certainly doing that yeah um, yeah so moving on to some good news let's talk about the Streamlabs obs scandal have you been following this at all zach this is also not good news i don't know no. what you're talking about <laughs> Uh, yeah, oh. I have. Unfortunately, uh, we use Streamlabs OBS, or OBS Streamlabs. Well, now just Streamlabs, but uh, we're we're looking into how difficult that will be to change. And I don't think it would it's not be too that bad. difficult. Yeah, no, there, there's actually actively people who have made like a very streamlined process to switch over to just OBS, and we're yeah. we're probably going to do it over over sometime this holiday break because. Uh, it's bad, folks. <laughs> Streamlabs OBS. Also, how did you fuck up this bad? Yeah, so let me run down. Let me run down. I'm just going to run down every single way in which they have uh, screwed themselves. Number one, uh, it all started when um, there's a company called Lightstream, and they have mm -hmm. some uh, stream features about in embedding certain stream content and stream actions in your stream. And mm -hmm. uh, Streamlabs OBS came out with a, a nearly identical feature, which in and of itself isn't that bad. But no. The marketing for it is literally an exact copy of Lightstream. They copied like like this is what the web page looks like. Yes. This is this is the type of image. They copied the testimonial text of people who that's, are supporting the software. Like it's just a that's the one that off. gets me. Is yeah. like you copy the reviews. It's and crazy. Your, your software isn't even out yet. So how do you have reviews? It's crazy. Oh, you don't. You just copied them from another. It's baffling. It's yeah. so bad. 
So then um, uh, Lightstream did a good thing, which is they basically went on Twitter and they said, yo, you're they a clown. They fucking put him on blast. They were like, you ever see, basically the tweet was just going like, you ever see a clown copy your homework? And then they put them side mm. by side. And then OBS mm. responded to that uh, and basically said, hey, uh, by the way, we are not associated at all with Streamlabs OBS. And we asked them, they asked to use our name. And we said, and we no. asked them not to. We said, Please and they do did not. it anyways. And they did it anyways. And they tried to file a trademark for Streamlabs OBS when OBS mm -hmm. is a an open source software. And it, I, I for one, I thought slobs and OBS were were related. It turns out they're not. Yeah, yeah. I thought I thought they were kind of like a brother sister thing company, or 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 like it, it was just a different version of the same hardware that they, yeah. like somebody had tuned up for a different way. Um, no, it's basically OBS's open source, and then Streamlabs OBS came along and said, we can slap a pretty coat of paint on this and start charging money for all sorts of features on it. Yep. And uh, OBS put them on blast for that. And then Elgato got in the game. I feel like yeah. I feel like this is the weakest, but they do kind of have a claim for here. For sure, for sure. Which is Elgato, which was basically like, yeah, remember Streamlabs putting out their mobile version of the Stream Deck and calling it Stream Deck? And it was like, okay, that's fair. Yeah. You shouldn't call it Stream Deck, you know? They, they could have came up with a better name. Yeah, because uh, even, the, even the knockoff version that we use is called Up Deck. Mm -hmm. they, they have the understanding not to duplicate the Stream Deck name. Right, right, right. It's, and it's and there, like, there were other tweets in it too in, in in this thread that were like one person applied for a job at streamlabs and they were like oh well this is this is a routine thing we do for anybody applying for a job uh and they're basically like make this powerpoint presentation do like a legitimately legitimately like large amount of uh -huh. research and put it into a presentation and like do research on our competitors for us yeah and then we'll consider your application and the person was like no they were like, yeah. if you want me to to do this work, like I'm fine with doing it, but you have to pay me at least on a freelance level. Yeah. And they said no. And he's like, okay, well, screw you. But then there was like somebody else responded, like, oh shit, I did that and they didn't hire me. <laughs> it's just like, oh God. Yeah, it's 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 just like so so Streamlabs OBS basically said, Okay, we hear you. We're gonna be we dropping OBS from up. the name. <laughs> But that's yeah. the only thing they said was we're going to drop OBS from the name. And, oh, it was it was supposed to be placeholder, that marketing material that was copied. And it was like there was too much work put in for that. Yeah, to be placeholder. No, 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 no. That was such a shitty lie. Um, yeah. So Streamlabs OBS, highly recommend you stay away from it and just just go to OBS and use Nightbot and use. Uh, oh, shoot. What's the other one we use that Streamlabs? No, not Streamlabs. Mm. Oh, no, I do use Streamlabs. <laughs> do we use oh, Streamlabs? No. We use something for the pop-up overlays. Mm -hmm. There are plenty. There's plenty of other stuff to use. Don't use Streamlabs yes. OBS. Yes. It's, it, it's yeah. This this one sucked because it was like, listen, I don't I don't, I don't play any Activision games. I don't feel uh -huh. like I don't, this doesn't hurt me. It's more of just like, man, fuck them. This is like, ah, oh, I'm gonna have to change the program I use to to run everything. Yeah. yeah. Um. I hear you. Fuck these people. They, they got <laughs> caught and they did such a bad job. They could, I mean, like, no, even if they gave like a Supreme, like fall on their own sword, I would have still been like, yo, no, but they didn't do that. <laughs> they like, no. okay, cool. We'll change the name. No, you can't. Ah, uh, yeah. That's, can't. that's all they committed to was like, oops, we'll change the marketing material. We got caught stealing and we'll drop OBS from the name and that's it. And they also said they're they're open source, which I don't think that's true. No, and and two, it had been proven basically like they they were manipulating uh, search algorithms to to so if you typed OBS, it would be Streamlabs OBS. Yeah, to fuck over the original open source people, and yeah, that's not open source. Yeah, it was like it was like a few hours later they changed like they're they're like oh we're making it so we're no longer making. Uh, we're no longer fucking over OBS. And it was like half a day later before that actually went into effect. Yeah. It was just like, guys, like, don't say you're doing something if it's not already done. Yeah. Because people can search that right away. They can oh, do it. Gosh. They can figure it out. Yeah. Just, just, man. I, but again, I'm glad this is finally coming around. Because for me, I, I didn't use Streamlabs OBS just because I was like, this looks like a pretty version of what I get with OBS. And I'd yep. rather do that. And also, when I when I first started streaming, OBS had more features than Streamlabs OBS. And so I was like, I'll just go with OBS. Mm -hmm. 
But now that I actually know the evil behind Streamlabs OBS, uh, maybe I will never have to see that god awful acronym slobs ever again. Yeah, you know? it does suck. Maybe good riddance. Um, mm -hmm. We've got some other news items here. I, I don't know if you in particular want to talk about any of these. They're not super. No, the the one I did want to talk about just is like to end on like a meme note. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't even know if that's a high note, but hey, guess what, folks? Sega's making cologne. Do you oh, want to smell like Sonic? Right. Do you want to smell like Ryu Hayabusa? That's not who that is. The fucking main character from Jim Yakuza. Shenmue. Oh. Shenmue is his name. Jim uh, Shenmue. <laughs> yeah. Jo Johnny Shenmue. Sh Jim uh, Shamwow Shenmue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, like, th this is dumb. I but, will say that the 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 packaging is kind of cool, yeah. Uh, but but what a wildly weird thing for you to be putting out in the Europe. Also, like I get it. Hey, Sonic and Yakuza, huge franchises for Sega. Yeah. 100%. Why the fuck did you make a Shenmue one? <laughs> I will say, like, though, why would you? Why didn't you do Persona? Literally do Persona, Sega. You would make so yeah. much more money. Yakuza makes one hundred percent sense though because uh when yeah, i yeah absolutely when i it's bought yakuza the yakuza zero special edition came with a business card holder that i have and That's then I, I think yakuza kiwami which i didn't buy the deluxe edition but it came with a whiskey tumbler <laughs> that's so cool yeah yeah so like like yeah cologne fits in there 100 percent. but sonic absolutely cologne, what, is it, what is it gonna smell like sonic like, is very bizarre crayons and, again, and deodorant just... i don't know <laughs> It's just, it's very weird. It's such a weird, like, eh, okay, whatever. Hi. Cool. Thank you, Sega. <laughs> thank I'm, you for some levity in this terrible news week. Like, my only hope is that at some point it goes on sale so low that it hits below my prize budget threshold for mini game game show. Mm. Uh, oh, who knows? This is probably going to be like 60 yeah. bucks each. I guarantee you it's going to be way yeah, too no, much. There's no, there's no way. There's no way it's going to be cheaper than that. Um, I don't know. I, my hope is that it's like the PlayStation Classic, which came out for a hundred dollars, got panned, and within like a month yeah. was down to twenty bucks. And then it was yeah, just it was like, super cheap. Yeah. It's great. It's great, by the way. Buy it. I bought it for sixty. I'm happy with it. But anyways, um, that's gonna do it for this evening. Uh, let me cue up that outro. Do you guys do? Do you have an outro bit? Not like an outro bit, but like like I know we did the the the. the... No, we uh, the we, ranking we, we finished the list. We I know you got up, rid of the rankings. But. Yeah, we haven't come up with a replacement yet. I think Will didn't want to do a replacement, but I have some ideas. I want to bring it back. I definitely want to bring something back. Um, I mean, he's not here right now. This would be the best chance to implement I something. Already I already started the music. music. Okay. I know you started the music. You can turn the music off. I. Not really. I gotta edit this anyway. Uh, okay, no, I don't blame you. I, I promise you, the fir next, the first time we do the new bit, you'll be on. Uh, speaking of being on, where can people find you, Zach? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can find me on uh, YouTube.com slash Save Data Team and Twitch.tv slash Save Data Team. Pretty much anything ending in Save Data Team will be there. Uh, That's fantastic. For all your gaming needs. And you can find us at the uh, Subpixel Teams at Subpixel Team on Twitter, Twitch, Facebook, TikTok, and Instagram, and at subpixelfilms.com. Thank you guys so much for joining us. We're local chat every Thursday, 9 p.m. Eastern. We'll see you guys next time.